Adele, introduce yourself. Okay, hi, I'm Adele Myers. I am currently getting a PhD in physics at UC Santa Barbara, but my current research is in analyzing biological shapes with Nina, Nina Mialon in the BioShape Lab. Um, when we say biological shapes, we mean things like the shapes of, like the outline of a cell, specifically the um, membrane of a cell, or we could mean something like a 3D shape of the surface of a brain or the 3D shape of a heart or something like that. But my most recent paper, which is titled Regression-Based Metric Learning on Shape Spaces of Cell Curves, which I will be presenting next Friday virtually at the, workshop, at the NeurIPS workshop, mean, Learning Meaningful Representations <laughs> of Life, uh, this paper specifically considers a cell membrane as a, biolog a, as a biological shape. So cells evolve over time, and as they evolve, they often change in shape. So the, mem the shape of the cell membrane will change over time. And we wanted to look more closely at this problem, specifically at cell migration, because cell migration is essential to a lot of um, things in life. Hence, finding meaningful representations of life, it was perfect mm -hmm. for our topic. Uh, so we wanted to find the best way to quantify changes in sh cell shape over time. A lot of biologists quantify cell shape with things like circularity or convexity or perimeter of the cell or area of the cell, but we wanted to find a way that, to analyze these cell shapes that was a bit more mathematically robust, specifically to try to quantify the difference in cell shape in a way that was mathematically robust. So step one, if you consider one cell shape, we take samples along the surface of the cell or the, the outline of the cell. Uh, step two, once we've taken a bunch of samples around the outline of the cell, we project this discrete curve onto an object space. And step three, do that for the entire cell trajectory. So if we are considering a cell as it changes over time, You'll have one cell at one time point, another cell at another time point, another cell at another time point. So we project all of those cells onto the shape space where they then form a trajectory in the shape space. Next, we quotient by rotation, scaling, translation, and now all of these cells lie on the manifold of discrete curves. Now, now we're on a Riemannian manifold, and to define any sort of distance on this Riemannian manifold, we have to define a Riemannian metric. Specifically, we define the elastic metric or a family of elastic metrics. And um, this is important because we are about to do a regression model on the manifold of discrete curves. So if we wanna do regression, then we have to define distance. Um, the elastic metric is very well suited to analyze distances between two curves, cell curves in this case, because it depends on two parameters, a bending parameter and a stretching parameter. So Riemannian metrics, again, define distances on Riemannian manifolds, and A and B the bending parameter and the stretching parameter, define these distances between cells based off of how bent or stretched they are compared to each other. When I say stretched, I mean, if this is a circle, then this is a stretched circle. If this is a stretched circle, then this is a bent stretched circle. So that's bending and stretching, and that is the bending parameter and the stretching parameter that we're considering in the family of elastic metrics that our paper considers. So, the, so now we've defined the elastic metric, 
we've defined the manifold of discrete curves that we're considering. And next, we are going to go back to the concept of regression. Our goal, our initial goal was to try to best fit a trajectory of cell curves with regression. The simplest form of regression is geodesic regression, which is similar to linear regression if it were a linear space. So in a linear space, which is like X, Y, Z, however many dimensions, that would be linear regression. But on a manifold, we consider geodesic regression. That's the simplest form of regression. But, okay, now we want to do geodesic regression on the trajectory of shapes. But if we want to do geodesic regression, then we have to define a metric. But if we define a metric, then we have to choose A and B because, well, if we're doing a, an elastic metric. However, that leads us to the question, what A and B do we choose? And that is what our paper, <laughs> Riemannian-based elastic metric learning, does. Uh, our paper learns the A and B that will optimize geodesic regression on the manifold of discrete curves for a specific trajectory. Um, so, step one is first we came up with a, an explicit gradient of the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination is that R squared term that you see in statistics classes, uh, and it essentially describes how well your data is being fit by the regression model. Um, so that, that's kind of our, our loss function. We, de we define, we describe how well a geodesic regression fit is describing the trajectory based off of its coefficient of determination. So we first find the coefficient of determination with respect to A and B, the elastic metric parameters, bending and stretching parameters. Then we find the gradient of R squared with respect to A and B. And then we perform a gradient ascent algorithm to try to find the, the A and B that will, op, that will maximize R squared and thus optimize regression on the manifold of discrete curves. Um, so step one, again, <laughs> we're going in steps. <laughs> step one is to create a synthetic data trajectory. We, um, we create this synthetic trajectory between two real cancer cells so that the synthetic trajectory will be realistic cells. Um, next, we decide what our true metric parameters are gonna be so that we know with certainty that this synthetic trajectory is going to follow a geodesic in, in whatever metric you're choosing. Um, so now you have a synthetic trajectory that you know follows a geodesic with some given A and B. This geodesic, this geodesic synthetic geodesic trajectory will not necessarily be a geodesic if you choose different A and B parameters. So then our code learns the A and B parameters without knowing the true A and true B. If you give it an input A, B, then it will learn the A and B parameters that where the trajectory follows a geodesic. And um, we compared our work against the SRV metric, which is a special case of this elastic metric where I think a, yeah, A is equal to one and B is equal to 0.5. And um, our learned parameters often, well, they, they most of the time outperformed the SRV metric as long as A and B weren't close to the SRV metric. 
So we were pretty excited about that. Uh, and then the next step is to test on real data to try to quantify on real cells uh, how much a cell bends and stretches over time, which then biologists can use to um, try to differentiate between different types of cells or uh, different, yeah, different cell trajectories. Amazing. So I've got a question. <clears throat> I'm really interested in, I'm a, I'm a machine learning guy, so I'm interested in building representations of the world. Okay. And in this particular representation, we're talking about, um, you know, shape space and having this ability to discreetly represent surfaces and so on, right? So this must surely introduce some level of approximation error, depending on your level of discretization or your level of resolution. And Definitely. I was just wondering, um, how much approximation error is it? And how did you kind of like, presumably you tweaked the parameters to find a, a, an appropriate trade-off there? Yeah, so let me know if this, this answer is answering your question or not. But we did test our code on, on trajectories with varying levels of noise mm -hmm. and varying levels of sampling points and uh, varying levels of the number of cells in your trajectory. And it, our code definitely worked better with some, with you know, low noise. Uh, surprisingly, it actually worked well with around 30 to 50 sampling points when we had much more sampling, many more sampling points than that, it didn't work as well. And of course, it also worked well when there were lots of um, cells in the cell trajectory. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. Anything else you want to add? Uh, How are you finding NeurIPS? NeurIPS is so fun. I don't have that strong of, well, I've actually never formally learned machine learning before. So it's really fun to just go up to all of the poster presenters and ask the experts about their work. Yeah, everyone's yeah. really nice and smart. <laughs> well, um, it's, it's so interesting because um, I was speaking with Adele before we started filming and um, you, you're basically talking another language to me and, and that's a great representation of, we have all of these intersectional fields yeah. and we have very specialized expertise in, in our respective fields. And it's so interesting when we all come together and yeah. share the same space. Yeah, I guess that's the whole point of, of coming here. I'm really, really happy that I was able to come. Amazing. Well, um, Adele, thank you so much. That was an amazing interview. I really appreciate awesome. it. Thank you so much. Cool.